The evolution of fish began about 530 million years ago during the Cambrian explosion. It was during this time that the early chordates developed the skull and the vertebral column, leading to the first craniates and vertebrates. The first fish lineages belong to the Agnatha, or Jawless fish. Early examples include Hycuchthus. During the late Cambrian, eel-like jawless fish called the conodonts, and small mostly armored fish known as ostracoderms, first appeared. Most jawless fish are now extinct, but the extant lampreys may approximate ancient pre-jawed fish. Lampreys belong to the cyclostomata, which includes the extant hagfish, and this group may have split early on from other agnathans. The earliest jawed vertebrates probably developed during the late Ordovician period. They are first represented in the fossil record from the Silurian by two groups of fish, the armored fish known as placoderms, which evolved from the ostracoderms, and the acanthidae or spiny sharks. The jawed fish that are still extant in modern days also appeared during the late Silurian, the chondrichthys or cartilaginous fish and the osteichthyes or bony fish. The bony fish evolved into two separate groups, the actinoterygii or ray fin fish and sarcoterygii, which includes the lobe fin fish. During the Devonian period a great increase in fish variety occurred, especially among the ostracoderms and placoderms, and also among the lobe fin fish and early sharks. This has led to the Devonian being known as the age of fishes. It was from the lobe fin fish that the tetrapods evolved, the four-limbed vertebrates, represented today by amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. Transitional tetrapods first appeared during the early Devonian, and by the late Devonian the first tetrapods appeared. The diversity of jawed vertebrates may indicate the evolutionary advantage of a jawed mouth, but it is unclear if the advantage of a hinged jaw is greater biting force, improved respiration, or a combination of factors. Fish do not represent a monophyletic group, but a paraphyletic one, as they exclude the tetrapods. Fish, like many other organisms, have been greatly affected by extinction events throughout natural history. The Ordovician Silurian extinction events led to the loss of many species. The late Devonian extinction led to the extinction of the ostracoderms and placoderms by the end of the Devonian, as well as other fish. The spiny sharks became extinct at the Permian Triassic extinction event, the conodonts became extinct at the Triassic Jurassic extinction event, the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, and the present day Holocene extinction, have also affected fish variety and fish stocks. Topic. Overview Fish may have evolved from an animal similar to a coral-like sea squirt a tunicate, whose larvae resemble early fish in important ways. The first ancestors of fish may have kept the larval form into adulthood as some sea squirts do today, although this path cannot be proven. Vertebrates, among them the first fishes, originated about 530 million years ago during the Cambrian explosion, which saw the rise in organism diversity. The first ancestors of fish, or animals that were probably closely related to fish, were Picaia, Hycuchthus and Malacunmingia. These three genera all appeared around 530 ma. Picaia had a primitive notochord, a structure that could have developed into a vertebral column later. Unlike the other fauna that dominated the Cambrian, these groups had the basic vertebrate body plan, a notochord, rudimentary vertebrae, and a well-defined head and tail. All of these early vertebrates lacked jaws in the common sense and relied on filter feeding close to the seabed, these were followed by indisputable fossil vertebrates in the form of heavily armored fishes discovered in rocks from the Ordovician period 500-430 ma. The first jawed vertebrates appeared in the late Ordovician and became common in the Devonian, often known as the Age of Fishes. The two groups of bony fishes, the Actinoterygii and Sarcoterygii, evolved and became common. The Devonian also saw the demise of virtually all jawless fishes, save for lampreys and hagfish, as well as the Placodermi, a group of armored fish that dominated much of the late Silurian. The Devonian also saw the rise of the first labyrinthodonts, which was a transitional between fishes and amphibians. The colonization of new niches resulted in diversification of body plans and sometimes an increase in size. 
The Devonian period 395 to 345 Ma brought in such giants as the Placoderm dunculosteus, which could grow up to 7 meters long, an early air-breathing fish that could remain on land for extended periods. Among this latter group were ancestral amphibians. The reptiles appeared from labyrinthodonts in the subsequent Carboniferous period. The anapsid and synapsid reptiles were common during the late Paleozoic, while the diapsids became dominant during the Mesozoic. In the sea, the bony fishes became dominant. The later radiations, such as those of fish in the Silurian and Devonian periods, involved fewer taxa, mainly with very similar body plans. The first animals to venture onto dry land were arthropods. Some fish had lungs and strong, bony fins and could crawl onto the land also. Topic. Jawless fish Jawless fishes belong to the superclass Agnatha in the phylum Chordata, subphylum Vertebrata. Agnatha comes from the Greek, and means, no jaws. It excludes all vertebrates with jaws, known as nathostomes. Although a minor element of modern marine fauna, jawless fish were prominent among the early fish in the early Paleozoic. Two types of early Cambrian animal apparently having fins, vertebrate musculature, and gills are known from the early Cambrian Maotianshan shales of China, Hykuchthus and Malacunmingia. They have been tentatively assigned to Agnatha by Jean Vier. A third possible Agnathid from the same region is Hykouela. A possible Agnathid that has not been formally described was reported by Simonetti from the Middle Cambrian Burgess Shale of British Columbia. Many Ordovician, Silurian, and Devonian Agnathians were armored with heavy, bony, and often elaborately sculpted plates derived from mineralized scales. The first armored Agnathans the ostracoderms, precursors to the bony fish and hence to the tetrapods, including humans are known from the Middle Ordovician, and by the late Silurian the Agnathans had reached the high point of their evolution. Most of the ostracoderms, such as Thelodonts, Osteostracans, and Galeospids, were more closely related to the Nathostomes than to the surviving Agnathans, known as Cyclostomes. Cyclostomes apparently split from other Agnathans before the evolution of dentine and bone, which are present in many fossil Agnathans, including Conodonts. Agnathans declined in the Devonian and never recovered. The Agnathans as a whole are paraphyletic, because most extinct Agnathans belong to the stem group of Nathostomes. Recent molecular data, both from rRNA and from mtDNA strongly supports the theory that living Agnathans, known as cyclostomes, are monophyletic. In phylogenetic taxonomy, the relationships between animals are not typically divided into ranks, but illustrated as a nested family tree, known as a cladogram. Phylogenetic groups are given definitions based on their relationship to one another, rather than purely on physical traits such as the presence of a backbone. This nesting pattern is often combined with traditional taxonomy, in a practice known as evolutionary taxonomy. The cladogram below for jawless fish is based on studies compiled by Philippe Janvier and others for the Tree of Life web project. Equals group is extinct equals topic conodonts equals conodonts resembled primitive jawless eels they appeared 520 ma and were wiped out 200 ma initially they were known only from tooth like microfossils called conodont elements these teeth have been variously interpreted as filter feeding apparatuses or as a grasping and crushing array. Conodonts ranged in length from a centimeter to the 40 centimeters promisum. Their large eyes had a lateral position, which makes a predatory role unlikely. The preserved musculature hints that some conodonts at least were efficient cruisers but incapable of bursts of speed. In 2012 researchers classified the conodonts in the phylum chordata on the basis of their fins with fin rays, chevron-shaped muscles and notochord. Some researchers see them as vertebrates similar in appearance to modern hagfish and lampreys, though phylogenetic analysis suggests that they are more derived than either of these groups. Equals. Topic. Ostracoderms. 
equals Ostracoderms shell -skinned are armored jawless fishes of the Paleozoic. The term does not often appear in classifications today because it is paraphyletic or polyphyletic, and has no phylogenetic meaning. However, the term is still used informally to group together the armored jawless fishes. The ostracoderm armor consisted of 3 to 5 mm polygonal plates that shielded the head and gills, and then overlapped further down the body like scales. The eyes were particularly shielded. Earlier chordates used their gills for both respiration and feeding, whereas ostracoderms used their gills for respiration only. They had up to eight separate pharyngeal gill pouches along the side of the head, which were permanently open with no protective operculum. Unlike invertebrates that use ciliated motion to move food, ostracoderms used their muscular pharynx to create a suction that pulled small and slow-moving prey into their mouths. The first fossil fishes that were discovered were ostracoderms. The Swiss anatomist Louis Agassiz received some fossils of bony armored fish from Scotland in the 1830s. He had a hard time classifying them as they did not resemble any living creature. He compared them at first with extant armored fish such as catfish and sturgeons but later realizing that they had no movable jaws, classified them in 1844 into a new group, ostracoderms. Ostracoderms existed in two major groups, the more primitive heterostracans and the cephalaspids. Later, about 420 million years ago, the jawed fish evolved from one of the ostracoderms. After the appearance of jawed fish, most ostracoderm species underwent a decline, and the last ostracoderms became extinct at the end of the Devonian period. Topic. Jawed fish. The vertebrate jaw probably originally evolved in the Silurian period and appeared in the placoderm fish, which further diversified in the Devonian. The two most anterior pharyngeal arches are thought to have become the jaw itself and the hyoid arch, respectively. The hyoid system suspends the jaw from the braincase of the skull, permitting great mobility of the jaws. Already long assumed to be a paraphyletic assemblage leading to more derived nathostomes, the discovery of entelognathus suggests that placoderms are directly ancestral to modern bony fish. As in most vertebrates, fish jaws are bony or cartilaginous and oppose vertically, comprising an upper jaw and a lower jaw. The jaw is derived from the most anterior two pharyngeal arches supporting the gills, and usually bears numerous teeth. The skull of the last common ancestor of today's jawed vertebrates is assumed to have resembled sharks. It is thought that the original selective advantage garnered by the jaw was not related to feeding, but to increased respiration efficiency. The jaws were used in the buccal pump observable in modern fish and amphibians that pumps water across the gills of fish or air into the lungs in the case of amphibians. Over evolutionary time the more familiar use of jaws to humans, in feeding, was selected for and became a very important function in vertebrates. Many teleost fish have substantially modified their jaws for suction feeding and jaw protrusion, resulting in highly complex jaws with dozens of bones involved. Jawed vertebrates and jawed fish evolved from earlier jawless fish, and the cladogram below for jawed vertebrates is a continuation of the cladogram in the section above. Equals group as extinct. Equals. Topic: Placoderms. Equals. Placoderms, class Placodermi, plate skinned, are extinct armored prehistoric fish, which appeared about 430 Ma in the early to middle Silurian. They were mostly wiped out during the late Devonian extinction event, 378 Ma, though some survived and made a slight recovery in diversity during the Famenian epoch before dying out entirely at the close of the Devonian, 360 Maya. They are ultimately ancestral to modern nathostome vertebrates. Their head and thorax were covered with massive and often ornamented armored plates. The rest of the body was scaled or naked, depending on the species. The armor shield was articulated, with the head armor hinged to the thoracic armor. This allowed placoderms to lift their heads, unlike ostracoderms. Placoderms were the first jawed fish, their jaws likely evolved from the first of their gill arches. 
The chart on the right shows the rise and demise of the separate Placoderm lineages, Acanthothoraci, Renanida, Antiarchi, Petalichthidae, Tychtodontida and Arthrodira. Spiny sharks Equals Spiny sharks, class Acanthidae, are extinct fishes that share features with both bony and cartilaginous fishes, though ultimately more closely related to and ancestral to the latter. Despite being called spiny sharks, Acanthodians predate sharks, though they gave rise to them. They evolved in the sea at the beginning of the Silurian period, some 50 million years before the first sharks appeared. Eventually competition from bony fishes proved too much, and the spiny sharks died out in Permian times about 250 ma. In form they resembled sharks, but their epidermis was covered with tiny rhomboid platelets like the scales of holosteans gars, bowfins. <laughs> Topic. Cartilaginous fishes Equals. Cartilaginous fishes, class chondrichthys, consisting of sharks, rays and chimeras, appeared by about 395 million years ago, in the Middle Devonian, evolving from Acanthodians. The class contains the sub-classes Holocephala chimera and Elasmobranchi sharks and rays. The radiation of elasma branches in the chart on the right is divided into the taxa, cladosalake, eugeniodontiforms, simorita, xenocondiforms, tenocondiforms, hybodontiforms, galeomorphy, squaliforms and batoidia. <laughs> Bony fishes Bony fishes, class Osteichthyes, are characterized by bony skeleton rather than cartilage. They appeared in the late Silurian, about 419 million years ago. The recent discovery of Entelognathus strongly suggests that bony fishes and possibly cartilaginous fishes, via Acanthodians, evolved from early placoderms. A subclass of the Osteichthyes, the ray finned fishes have become the dominant group of fishes in the post Paleozoic and modern world, with some 30,000 living species. The bony and cartilaginous fish groups that emerged after the Devonian were characterized by steady improvements in foraging and locomotion. <laughs> Lobe finned fishes Lobe finned fishes, fish belonging to the class Sarcoterygi, are mostly extinct bony fishes, basally characterized by robust and stubby lobe fins containing a robust internal skeleton, cosmoid scales, and internal nostrils. Their fins are fleshy, lobed, paired fins, joined to the body by a single bone. The fins of lobe finned fish differ from those of all other fish in that each is borne on a fleshy, lobe like, scaly stalk extending from the body. The pectoral and pelvic fins are articulated in ways resembling the tetrapod limbs they were the precursors to. The fins evolved into the legs of the first tetrapod land vertebrates, amphibians. They also possess two dorsal fins with separate bases, as opposed to the single dorsal fin of ray finned fish. The brain case of lobe finned fishes primitively has a hinge line, but this is lost in tetrapods and lungfish. Many early lobe finned fishes have a symmetrical tail. All lobe finned fishes possess teeth covered with true enamel. Lobe finned fishes, such as coelacanths and lungfish, were the most diverse group of bony fishes in the Devonian. Taxonomists who subscribe to the cladistic approach include the grouping Tetrapoda within the Sarcoterygi, and the tetrapods in turn include all species of four limbed vertebrates. The fin limbs of lobe finned fishes such as the coelacanths show a strong similarity to the expected ancestral form of tetrapod limbs. The lobe finned fish apparently followed two different lines of development and are accordingly separated into two subclasses, the ripodistia including the lungfish, and the tetrapodomorpha, which include the tetrapoda and the actinistia coelacanths. The first lobe finned fishes, found in the uppermost Silurian ca 418 ma, closely resembled spiny sharks, which became extinct at the end of the Paleozoic. 
in the early Middle Devonian 416 to 385 Ma, while the predatory placoderms dominated the seas, some lobe finned fishes came into freshwater habitats. In the early Devonian 416 to 397 Ma, the lobe finned fishes split into two main lineages, the coelacanths and the ripodistians. The former never left the oceans and their heyday was the late Devonian and Carboniferous, from 385 to 299 Ma, as they were more common during those periods than in any other period in the Phanerozoic. Coelacanths still live today in the oceans genus Latimeria. The Ripodistians, whose ancestors probably lived in estuaries, migrated into freshwater habitats. They in turn split into two major groups, the lungfish and the tetrapodomorphs. The lungfish's greatest diversity was in the Triassic period, today there are fewer than a dozen genera left. The lungfish evolved the first proto-lungs and proto-limbs, developing the ability to live outside a water environment in the Middle Devonian 397-385 Ma. The first tetrapodomorphs, which included the gigantic rhizodonts, had the same general anatomy as the lungfish, who were their closest kin, but they appear not to have left their water habitat until the late Devonian epoch 385-359 Ma, with the appearance of tetrapods four-legged vertebrates. Tetrapods are the only tetrapodomorphs that survived after the Devonian. Lobe finned fishes continued until towards the end of Paleozoic era, suffering heavy losses during the Permian Triassic extinction event 251 Ma. Topic: <laughs> Ray finned fishes. Ray finned fishes, class Actinoterygii, differ from lobe finned fishes in that their fins consist of webs of skin supported by spines. Rays made of bone or horn. There are other differences in respiratory and circulatory structures. Ray finned fishes normally have skeletons made from true bone, though this is not true of sturgeons and paddlefishes. Ray finned fishes are the dominant vertebrate group, containing half of all known vertebrate species. They inhabit abyssal depths in the sea, coastal inlets and freshwater rivers and lakes, and are a major source of food for humans. Topic Timeline Topic Pre Devonian Origin of Fish Topic Devonian Age of Fishes The Devonian period is broken into the early, middle, and late Devonian. By the start of the early Devonian 419 Maya, jawed fishes had divided into four distinct clades, the placoderms and spiny sharks, both of which are now extinct, and the cartilaginous and bony fishes, both of which are still extant. The modern bony fishes, class Osteichthyes, appeared in the late Silurian or early Devonian, about 416 million years ago. Both the cartilaginous and bony fishes may have arisen from either the placoderms or the spiny sharks. A subclass of bony fishes, the ray finned fishes have become the dominant group in the post-Paleozoic and modern world, with some 30,000 living species. Sea levels in the Devonian were generally high. Marine faunas were dominated by bryozoa, diverse and abundant brachiopods, the enigmatic heteroloids, microconchids and corals. Lily-like crinoids were abundant, and trilobites were still fairly common. Among vertebrates, jawless armored fish declined in diversity, while the jawed fish simultaneously increased in both the sea and fresh water. Armored placoderms were numerous during the lower stages of the Devonian period but became extinct in the late Devonian, perhaps because of competition for food against the other fish species. Early cartilaginous and bony fishes also become diverse and played a large role within the Devonian seas. The first abundant genus of shark, Cladosalake, appeared in the oceans during the Devonian period. The great diversity of fish around at the time have led to the Devonian being given the name, the Age of Fish, in popular culture. The first ray-finned and lobe-finned bony fish appeared in the Devonian, while the placoderms began dominating almost every known aquatic environment. 
However, another subclass of osteichthyes, the Sarcoteragi, including lobe-finned fishes including coelacanths and lungfish, and tetrapods, was the most diverse group of bony fishes in the Devonian. Sarcopterygians are basally characterized by internal nostrils, lobe fins containing a robust internal skeleton, and cosmoid scales. During the Middle Devonian 393-383 Ma, the armored jawless ostracoderm fishes were declining in diversity, the jawed fish were thriving and increasing in diversity in both the oceans and freshwater. The shallow, warm, oxygen-depleted waters of Devonian inland lakes, surrounded by primitive plants, provided the environment necessary for certain early fish to develop essential characteristics such as well-developed lungs and the ability to crawl out of the water and onto the land for short periods of time. Cartilaginous fishes, class chondrichthys, consisting of sharks, rays and chimeras, appeared by about 395 million years ago, in the Middle Devonian, during the late Devonian the first forests were taking shape on land. The first tetrapods appear in the fossil record over a period, the beginning and end of which are marked with extinction events. This lasted until the end of the Devonian 359 Maya. The ancestors of all tetrapods began adapting to walking on land, their strong pectoral and pelvic fins gradually evolved into legs see tiktalic. In the oceans, primitive sharks became more numerous than in the Silurian and the late Ordovician. The first ammonite mollusks appeared. Trilobites, the mollusk-like brachiopods and the great coral reefs, were still common. The late Devonian extinction occurred at the beginning of the last phase of the Devonian period, the Famenian faunal stage, the frasnian famenian boundary, about 372.2 ma. Many fossil agnathan fishes, save for the Samosteid heterostracans, make their last appearance shortly before this event. The late Devonian extinction crisis primarily affected the marine community, and selectively affected shallow warm water organisms rather than cool water organisms. The most important group affected by this extinction event were the reef builders of the Great Devonian Reef Systems. A second extinction pulse, the Hangenberg event closed the Devonian period and had a dramatic impact on vertebrate faunas. Placoderms mostly became extinct during this event, as did most members of other groups including lobe-finned fishes, acanthodians and early tetrapods in both marine and terrestrial habitats, leaving only a handful of survivors. This event has been related to glaciation in the temperate and polar zones as well as Eushenia and Anoxia in the seas. Topic. Fish to tetrapods The first tetrapods are four-legged, air-breathing, terrestrial animals from which the land vertebrates descended, including humans. They evolved from lobe-finned fish of the clade Sarcoteragi, appearing in coastal water in the Middle Devonian, and giving rise to the first amphibians. The group of lobe-finned fishes that were the ancestors of the tetrapod are grouped together as the Ripidistia, and the first tetrapods evolved from these fish over the relatively short time span 385 to 360 Ma. The early tetrapod groups themselves are grouped as Labyrinthodontia. They retained aquatic, fry-like tadpoles, a system still seen in modern amphibians. From the 1950s to the early 1980s it was thought that tetrapods evolved from fish that had already acquired the ability to crawl on land, possibly so they could go from a pool that was drying out to one that was deeper. However, in 1987, nearly complete fossils of Acanthostega from about 363 Ma showed that this late Devonian transitional animal had legs and both lungs and gills, but could never have survived on land. Its limbs and its wrist and ankle joints were too weak to bear its weight, its ribs were too short to prevent its lungs from being squeezed flat by its weight, its fish like tail fin would have been damaged by dragging on the ground. The current hypothesis is that Acanthostega, which was about 1 meter 3 .3 feet long, was a wholly aquatic predator that hunted in shallow water. Its skeleton differed from that of most fish, in ways that enabled it to raise its head to breathe air while its body remained submerged, including, its jaws show modifications that would have enabled it to gulp air. The bones at the back of its skull are locked together, providing strong attachment points for muscles that raised its head. The head is not joined to the shoulder girdle and it has a distinct neck. 
The Devonian proliferation of land plants may help to explain why air breathing would have been an advantage. Leaves falling into streams and rivers would have encouraged the growth of aquatic vegetation. This would have attracted grazing invertebrates and small fish that preyed on them. They would have been attractive prey, but the environment was unsuitable for the big marine predatory fish. Air breathing would have been necessary because these waters would have been short of oxygen, since warm water holds less dissolved oxygen than cooler marine water and since the decomposition position of vegetation would have used some of the oxygen there are 3 major hypotheses as to how tetrapods evolved their stubby fins proto limbs the traditional explanation is the shrinking waterhole hypothesis or desert hypothesis posited by the american paleontologist alfred romer he believed limbs and lungs may have evolved from the necessity of having to find new bodies of water as old waterholes dried up the second hypothesis is the Intertidal hypothesis, put forward in 2010 by a team of Polish paleontologists led by Grzegorz Niedzwiedzki. They argued that sarcopterygians may have first emerged onto land from intertidal zones rather than inland bodies of water. Their hypothesis is based on the discovery of the 395 million year old Zakhelmy tracks in Zakhelmy, Poland, the oldest ever discovered fossil evidence of tetrapods. The third hypothesis, the Woodland hypothesis was proposed by the American paleontologist Gregory J. Redelick in 2011. He argues that limbs may have developed in shallow bodies of water in woodlands as a means of navigating in environments filled with roots and vegetation. He based his conclusions on the evidence that transitional tetrapod fossils are consistently found in habitats that were formerly humid and wooded floodplains. Research by Jennifer A. Clack and her colleagues showed that the very earliest tetrapods, animals similar to Acanthostega, were wholly aquatic and quite unsuited to life on land. This is in contrast to the earlier view that fish had first invaded the land either in search of prey like modern mudskippers or to find water when the pond they lived in dried out and later evolved legs lungs etc two ideas about the homology of arms hands and digits have existed in the past 130 years first that digits are unique to tetrapods and second that antecedents were present in the fins of early sarcopterygian fish until recently it was believed that Genetic and fossil data support the hypothesis that digits are evolutionary novelties. p. 640. However new research that created a three-dimensional reconstruction of Pandarichthys, a coastal fish from the Devonian period 385 million years ago, shows that these animals already had many of the homologous bones present in the forelimbs of limbed vertebrates. For example, they had radial bones similar to rudimentary fingers but positioned in the arm-like base of their fins. Thus there was in the evolution of tetrapods a shift such that the outermost part of the fins were lost and eventually replaced by early digits. This change is consistent with additional evidence from the study of actinopterygians, sharks and lungfish that the digits of tetrapods arose from pre-existing distal radials present in more primitive fish. Controversy still exists since Tiktaalik, a vertebrate often considered the missing link between fishes and land-living animals, had stubby leg-like limbs that lacked the finger-like radial bones found in the Pandarichthys. The researchers of the paper commented that it is difficult to say whether this character distribution implies that Tiktaalik is autapomorphic, that Pandarichthys and tetrapods are convergent, or that Pandarichthys is closer to tetrapods than Tiktaalik. At any rate, it demonstrates that the fish tetrapod transition was accompanied by significant character incongruence in functionally important structures. p. 638. From the end of the Devonian to the mid Carboniferous, a 30 million year gap occurs in the fossil record. This gap, called Romer's Gap, is marked by the absence of ancestral tetrapod fossils and fossils of other vertebrates that look well adapted for life on land. By the late Devonian, land plants had stabilized freshwater habitats, allowing the first wetland ecosystems to develop, with increasingly complex food webs that afforded new opportunities. Freshwater habitats were not the only places to find water filled with organic matter and choked with plants with dense vegetation near the water's edge. 
Swampy habitats like shallow wetlands, coastal lagoons and large brackish river deltas also existed at this time, and there is much to suggest that this is the kind of environment in which the tetrapods evolved. Early fossil tetrapods have been found in marine sediments, and because fossils of primitive tetrapods in general are found scattered all around the world, they must have spread by following the coastal lines. They could not have lived in freshwater only. Fossil illuminates evolution of limbs from fins. Scientific American, 22 April 2004. Topic: Post-Devonian. The Mesozoic era began about 250 million years ago in the wake of the Permian-Triassic event, the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, and ended about 66 million years ago with the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, another mass extinction that killed off non-avian dinosaurs, as well as other plant and animal species. It is often referred to as the Age of Reptiles because reptiles were the dominant vertebrates of the time. The Mesozoic witnessed the gradual rifting of the supercontinent Pangaea into separate landmasses. The climate alternated between warming and cooling periods, overall the Earth was hotter than it is today. The Mesozoic saw the diversification of Neopterygian fishes, the clade that consists of Holostean and Teleost fishes. The diversity of body shape variety in Triassic, Jurassic, and early Cretaceous Neopterygian fishes has been documented, revealing that the accumulation of novel body shapes in teleost fishes was predominantly gradual throughout this 150 million year period 250 Maya 100 Maya. Holostean fishes appear to accumulate body shape variety so-called disparity between the early Triassic and Torsion, after which the amount of variety seen among their body shapes remained stable until the end of the early Cretaceous. Topic. Prehistoric fish Prehistoric fish are early fish that are known only from fossil records. They are the earliest known vertebrates, and include the first and extinct fish that lived through the Cambrian to the Tertiary. The study of prehistoric fish is called paleoichthyology. A few living forms, such as the coelacanth are also referred to as prehistoric fish, or even living fossils, due to their current rarity and similarity to extinct forms. Fish that have become recently extinct are not usually referred to as prehistoric fish. Topic. Living fossils The coelacanth was thought to have gone extinct 66 million years ago, until a living specimen belonging to the order was discovered in 1938. Topic. Fossil sites Some fossil sites that have produced notable fish fossils Topic. Fossil collections Some notable fossil fish collections Topic. Paleoichthyologists Paleoichthyology is the scientific study of the prehistoric life of fish. Listed below are some researchers who have made notable contributions to paleoichthyology. Topic. See also Comparative anatomy Convergent evolution in fish Evolution of paired fins Ichthyolith List of years in paleontology Old red sandstone Parodies of the ichthys symbol Prehistoric life Walking fish, fish with tetrapod-like features Vertebrate paleontology.